Home networking is pretty cool. You're telling me by fiddling with some boxes, I can get Wi-Fi and internet to whatever device in my house? Awesome. But the deeper you dig into this, the deeper this rabbit hole goes. And you somehow end up thinking you need a giant cabinet that looks like you're trying to land astronauts on the moon. You know what? That might be too much. So I've been trying to find a smaller and simpler solution for someone who doesn't have an IT, computer science, or engineering degree to figure out. And so I put together an easy to use, sort of, easy to put together, sort of, mini rack. Let's talk about it. Okay, so first off, what is a rack? Specifically, a server rack. A server rack's primary function is to store networking equipment. Oftentimes, it's loaded with network switches, storage servers like NASes, and computers. But a rack can also serve a purpose outside of just networking. People use it to make amazing audio setups, for home AV theater setups, and to control their smart homes, and oftentimes, their security cameras. It's just amazing how stacking a couple of little electronic boxes on top of each other makes things so convenient to manage and useful. I won't be taking it that far, though, but that would also be pretty sick. These server racks can come in different sizes, but there's only one industry standard rack size, and that's 19 inches of total mountable width. As for height, racks are measured in these things called units. And by units, I literally mean they call them units, not inches, meters, feet, whatever, units. This is the standard unit of measure that rack mounted devices use. So you will often find racks labeled as small as 4U or 4 units or very tall ones that are like 43U or 43 units. So that's the width and height of a rack mount device. But the weird measurement for server racks is their depth. This depends on rack to rack and device to device. There's no real standard there. So just be careful if you're looking into a full size rack or even for our mini rack and be sure that your device fits in that rack in particular. And then the external frame, the actual dimensions of the rack itself will be a little larger too. So keep that in consideration and how it will integrate into your own space. So that's a regular rack. What makes a mini rack a mini rack then? Well, instead of 19 inches of mountable width with the mini rack, it's 10 inches, so it's almost half the size width-wise. The height is still measured in units, but the upside is that mini racks are so much smaller and portable. It's so cute compared to its bigger relative, so that you can just carry it to and where it needs to go, or quickly take it apart to troubleshoot. But because it's smaller, the switches and other devices you mount inside the mini rack usually have less ports on them and tend to lack pro features that you would find on the larger, full-size rack devices like redundant power supplies. And because regular size racks are an industry standard, all the stuff made for them just fit inside a standard rack with no issues. And there's so many different accessories that you can buy for standard racks, like UPSs, drawers, monitors, cable management, and trays. It's almost limitless. On a 10 inch mini rack, it's more of a hobbyist size, so there's like way less options to make it exactly how you want it. And it's not really an official standard either. So a bit more DIY is required. So why did I decide to pick a mini rack knowing all these caveats? I just think it makes a lot more sense for a home, a small office or an apartment. You get the same core features of a full size rack, but in something way smaller that just nets you better spousal approval. That's a hint towards future plans that I wanna elaborate on. So I wanted something that does pretty much everything I use my rack for, but shrunken down. I still wanted this to be pretty easy to use and manage that someone mildly tech savvy could figure out how it all works and also make it simple enough that I think someone on the internet could take this video and easily do something similar for themselves. So here's what I came up with. I went with this Desk P Rackmate T1. This is an 8U mini rack that seems to be super popular in the home lab community. I first saw it in a Jeff Geerling and Techno Tim video, and I can see why it's so popular of an option. It looks and feels nice with an aluminum body, has acrylic side panels, and comes with all the accessories that you'd need to get started with filling out this rack, like the necessary screws, screwdriver, rack trays, and covers. This rack will be the foundation of our entire mini rack build. But do you know what else goes perfectly alongside a mini rack? a mini NAS, like one from today's sponsor, Ugreen and their NASSYNC DH2300. The DH2300 is Ugreen's entry-level NAS with two drive bays that support up to a total of 60 terabytes of storage and can be used as a cloud storage alternative to quickly upload photos from your phone, create time machine backups for your Mac, and just back up whatever else you want. This NAS is focused on being beginner friendly, so you can just tap your phone on the NFC label and access it directly from the Ugreen NAS app. But I love that their app also lets you do most of the things that you would do directly in the web UI, like view the status of the NAS, view your photos and videos, and update the NAS and its apps 
all in a single app. You can access all of your files fast on Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. But if you really needed it to, the DH2300 can also do some pretty cool things. The DH2300 has several USB ports that you can plug in to use external hard drives to use as network storage as well. With the DH2300 plugged into a one gigabit ethernet connection, you can quickly transfer large files, like a gigabyte sized file in just several seconds. It also makes a nice feature packed, low cost NAS option to back up my files. So if you're interested in Ugreen's 2300, check out the link in the video description below and get 20% off between now and December 1st, 2025. And thanks again to you, Green, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Okay, remember how just a moment ago I said that 10 inch racks are not an industry standard? That just means that there's not a ton of devices that fit exactly in a 10 inch mini rack. Instead, people normally take small networking switches and devices, normally designed for utility purposes, like a small switch you place in a room to keep all the devices connected to a full size rack, and then put those devices in mounts that makes them mountable on the 10 inch mini rack. And then, they're good to go. Or for something quick and easy, they can just use 10 inch trays, like the ones that come with the desk P, but these aren't made specifically for the thing you want to mount to the rack. But here's the problem. Manufacturers don't really sell 10 inch rack mounts for their small utility focused switches or their everyday consumer devices. So how are 10 inch racks even viable as an option then? Is this gonna be as easy as I hoped? There's just one big secret. There's a way to make sure whatever I want to sit on that mini rack becomes mountable on that rack. And that's with the magic of 3D printing. 3D printing is a huge part of the community surrounding 10 inch racks. With 3D printing, the possibilities becomes almost limitless in terms of finding ways to mount your devices. Now, full disclosure, none of the prints that I'm using in this video are ones that I created myself. They were created by the great community of folks who spent the time and effort so that people like me and you can quickly put our projects together without pulling our hairs out. I'll put links to all the prints that I used in this project down in the description below in case you wanna check out these creators and their hard work because the project a video like this wouldn't exist without their hard work and contributions. 3D printing can be extremely daunting to someone who's never used it. It's actually pretty easy. You really only need two things, a 3D printer and filament. I have a Bamboo Lab A1, and it took me about two hours to completely take it out of its box, set it up, and learn how to 3D print. And the funny thing is, even accounting for the cost of the printer and the filament, I still came out spending less than if I went with the full size rack for the same functionality. You can create your own prints or like me, find 3D prints people have created and shared online for the exact devices you're looking to mount. And this isn't just for racks or for home networking, but for stuff in general. I found so many useful prints that do amazing things that make my life easier outside of this. Now, if you're planning to fill out an eight unit rack, it will probably take about a week to get everything completely printed because these things just take time. So you can just go about your day while your printer does the dirty work. When first starting out with 3D printing, PLA is the easiest filament type to work with, but it's not great in hot environments. Since networking equipment can get warm, I'd suggest not using that to print your stuff. Instead, get some PETG filament. It handles higher temperatures a bit better and is a bit more flexible too. Pick your favorite color and you're ready to go. Just keep in mind that PETG is harder to print than PLA. I had to fiddle with my printer a bit to get it just dialed in the way I needed it to, and it's still not perfect, but Good enough for this project at least. Now, if you wanna deal with the time it requires learning about all of this and taking up space in your home with a 3D printer, there are 3D printing services available that will print things and ship them to you as well. So if you want an easy way out, that is a way that you could go about it, but it is more expensive than printing things yourself. So I check those out if you're uncomfortable doing it yourself or don't plan to really get into 3D printing. Okay, now that we know how these things will mount, let's talk about what's actually going into the rack. I primarily stuck with Ubiquiti network switches because they have an extensive list of small form factor switches and because I own a lot of their stuff and I'm deeply stuck in this ecosystem. They make good stuff that leans more prosumer while packing in some nice features. Also, they just look great on this rack, but feel free to use random switches you had laying around the house or any other devices you prefer. To manage this network, we're using the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Fiber. This thing gives you access to Ubiquiti's Unify OS in a compact package. This is what's gonna allow us to manage all the devices connected to the network and this rack, the access points, switches, and cameras. But just keep in mind to use cameras with the Gateway Fiber, you will require an M.2 tray and M.2 SSD 
SSD to store footage. The cloud gateway fiber is literally the brains of this whole network. You just plug your modem into this thing and it gives you internet access to the rest of the entire network. But we do need a few more items to fully flesh out this network. So the next item is an access point. I'm using the Unify U7 Pro, but if I were to redo it, I would suggest the Unify U7 Pro XG instead because it's more future proof and only $10 more. So this thing gives me Wi-Fi 7 to anything that's connected via Wi-Fi to this network and it's plugged directly into the Cloud Gateway Fibers PoE port, which provides it power and data. So now that we have at least one Wi-Fi access point, we can always add another if we need to. But what about other devices, things that need the most stable connections possible? For my own life, I need 10 gigabit ethernet ports for my computers and NASes for video editing. But also having more power over ethernet ports would be useful to power any additional access points and cameras that I want to. So I decided to pick up two different switches, the Ubiquiti Flex XG8 PoE and Ubiquiti Flex 2.5G PoE. Terrible naming convention, but their names do say exactly what they do. The first one gives me eight 10 gigabit PoE++ ports. It's literally the LeBron James of networking ports and LeBron here can provide you high data transfer speeds of 10 gigabit while at the same time providing PoE++. So it can power this slightly slower 2.5 gigabit PoE switch as well as all of my 10 gigabit computers and NASes. And then this 2.5 gigabit PoE switch can then be used to power additional access points, other small network switches that I might have and cameras. I know that this all sounds super confusing, so here's how my mapping looks, giving me a nice networking setup that can handle whatever situation I throw at it. And at the same time, provides me enough ports for an entire home. Having 10 gigabit is nice, but I also know that not everyone needs that kind of speeds. For regular people, it's pretty overkill. So if you're thinking about doing something similar, you can remove the Flex XG8 PoE and just have the Flex 2.5G PoE and maybe use a spare unit for a gigabit switch or another one of those 2.5G PoE switches. These things are so versatile for what they are. So so these are the switches that I'm using. This should cover a home, small office, or apartments needs just fine. But see, having the rack, the 3D printed mounts, and the devices only gets us so far. I think it would end up pretty messy and counter to our goal of having a nice, compact, organized, and easy to use rack if we didn't make it neat and tidy too. So I 3D printed a patch panel and purchased some couplers. Couplers let you better organize and extend your cables for my own needs. It'll just be these ethernet ones since these are the only ports my devices have. I also 3D printed a cable housing to keep an SFP plus cable in check too. From there, these couplers just snap into place of the patch panel, letting me manage all the cables inside the rack and out the back instead of having all the cables tangled and messy up front. Now all these devices use power and we don't want like 10 different cables sticking out. Instead, I bought this power strip to plug all the devices into. This way, there's only like one cable coming out of the rack that needs to be plugged into the wall, keeping things nice and neat. Like everything else, there's 3D prints for a mount for the power strip that lets us integrate it directly into the rack too. I also left the bottom unit of the rack alone, that way I have some space to hide all the different power supplies from the switches down there. And then I covered it up with a 3D printed panel so no one sees my messy cables. Now if you have some devices with ethernet ports on the back, and you need to plug them in through the front, I would get some two feet long ethernet cables. I found this to be a good length to pretty much connect any device to the patch panel without too much cable slack within the rack. With all the devices on the rack connected to the couplers on the patch panel, I can then patch them to whatever port on the different switches that I need to. For this, you probably want some very short ethernet patch cables. This is about 15 centimeters. This prevents your cables from getting all over the place. You could technically crimp ethernet cables that short by yourself if you'd like to, but for a bunch of short length cables like this, it's just so much more time efficient to buy a pack of them and then call it a day. Any CAT6 ethernet cable is fine for everything I've done up to this point. Of course, for any kind of electronics that are important to you, you need a UPS to handle power fluctuations and to help your devices safely shut down. I couldn't find any good 10 inch rack options. So for this, I recommend finding a standalone external UPS for this rack that meets its power demands for everything that you plan to plug into it. Okay, cool, Jimmy. You used about five units with some space still available on the top and bottom. What's that for? Well, this is for anything you want it to be. You might be into smart homes and have a Hue Hub that's an eyesore that you just want out of the way. Your internet provider may give you a modem that you're forced to use, and you could put that here too. You can squeeze a small NAS here for network-wide storage, or you can put a mini PC here to run some apps on your network. Your options with this 
are limitless. And that's a beautiful thing about this mini rack. Whatever you set your mind to, you can do it. And yes, I did use some pretty popular products that people, of course, would want to make mounts for. But if you need some help finding the right mount for even more obscure devices, there's actually a tool built by Sputter on Maker World that lets you type in the dimensions of what you're trying to mount on your rack and spit out a 3D print that you can easily mount your devices into. So for anything that would fit in your rack that you wanna make a mount for, you can. So this is my mini rack. It's way smaller than my current rack. And again, there are features that this rack just can't compete with when compared to a full size rack. But the small form factor and portability more than makes up for that. But for the needs of a small office or home, a 10 inch rack can be much less expensive. It's all about trade-offs. And I think the mini rack is a very good value proposition considering everything that you get inside of it and its size and its price. Okay, so that's all great in theory. But let's talk about what living with this rack has actually been like. Well, it's been great. It connects my computers and NASA's together, and it's been plenty stable with no dropped connections so far. I'm not pushing it too much just yet, and there are still some areas I'm trying to improve. With the leftover units, I'm planning on adding in a Mac Mini as a server. I also need to print some back panel covers just to make it look more finished. But besides that, this rack just kind of just sits there chugging away and it feels like my full size rack. So I think the mission was accomplished. I do intend for this to eventually end up in a new small space, but that's for a potentially different video. I really enjoyed this project and had a ton of fun putting it together, but I also hoped talking through my own journey helps you potentially do something similar for yourself. I think this is a great step up from having a Wi-Fi router and your smart home hubs just shoved into a cabinet with messy cables without going fully deep into full-size server racks. But I'd love to hear what you personally think. Were you thinking of filling out a full-size rack of your own? Or maybe a mini rack like I did? Or what's holding you back? Did you find what I put into the rack useful for your own personal projects? What other tips do you think I should have mentioned? Leave all that down in the comment section below and I'll see you all next time. Bye.